Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. Now we have our first guest and today's conversation is something that's very important. We're very practical and particular here on the show about businesses and how they're thriving, businesses and individuals and how they're thriving through COVID season and preparation for life beyond COVID season. Even though none of us have outlived the COVID before, but what are some of the practical steps? Because we're interested in your health, your wealth, your business. Today joining us to look, about, uh, look at businesses uh, thriving through COVID some of the challenges faced and what the way out is, is the CEO of FastPace.ng. His name is Umar Ethiom, and he's our guest today. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Our, our first question, usually, whenever we have to interview guests on the show, is to ask, how are you? Because we don't make assumptions that anybody is fine today, also the contrary is proven, because we know that the impact of COVID has hit people differently. So how are you? Oops. Um, I believe we're doing fine, and um, we, I mean, the season has its set of unique challenges that we've never faced before. Like you said, nobody has ever faced a COVID or a post-COVID, you know, so it's just um, daily re-strategizing and, you know, seeing how to continue to stay afloat. But in general, we're doing well. Thank All right, you. so you are a business. I mean, you run a logistics company, and... I'm, I'm, not into a, I'm not a business person. I can only tell how it affects me as a person or affects my brand. But I'd like you to mirror the situation of what co or the impact that COVID-19 has on businesses, speaking from a personal standpoint. Okay. To be honest, the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, it's, it's created a crisis of unprecedented proportion, you understand? So businesses are uncertain of you know, what to expect and what it's, I mean, what's going to happen. Uncertainty is one of the major issues that we faced as a, a business, you know. So we, as for, for example, when the COVID situation first hit um, Lagos State, where we currently operate, you know, businesses were locked down and all that. And, you know, there are some businesses like us that depend on daily income, daily revenue, you know. So that was a major challenge for us. And I believe that other businesses too, Based, you know, those particular challenges, you know, so the business approach changed too in that, um, take for instance, as a delivery business, we, we work with, you know, several dispatchers and it's easy to have a Zoom meeting with maybe any of our senior and our management staff, but how do you tell dispatcher you want to now meet with them on Zoom? So it was a challenge. So we had to now be educate our people and, you know, take them through that process where they can now embrace technology because this is our new present and most likely may be our new future you know so that's uh, that's that was generally it in a nutshell now i know that in this season there are a lot of like you mentioned there are a lot of adjustments that are being made daily adjustments yeah. are being made individuals are having to find new ways of working everybody's going online meetings there's something now referred to as zoom fatigue i saw a health care personnel who usually dishes out content on his, on his social media about how to handle this. Talking about Zoom fatigue. So you also have to make difficult decisions. You're the CEO of the company. Decisions based on the fact that income may not be as steady as it was before. So there'll be dwindling revenues. We now have to have pay cuts. Some staff may have to have been let go. How do you handle all of these decisions, you know, dealing with the fact that you may have had people that you know that are genuinely loyal and have been there, but right now we can't be able to sustain this. How have you been able to handle these difficult decision-making processes? Thank you so much for that question. In fact, that question is a very interesting one because um, at the peak of the lockdown in March, you know, we, first of all, our office was closed. We had to close our office. And, you know, most of the businesses in which we serve had to close their own offices too. So that led to almost like a 50%, you know, drop in our revenue at that very month. So, here we are now, we have our dispatchers, we have our people, but I mean, we don't have businesses because of the whole lockdown. So what do we do? Personally, as we, the leadership of our organization, we met and we discussed the way forward. We had several options. The first option was either probably to let some people go and, and all of that. But we now said, okay, who are we going to let go? Who are we going to leave? So we came to a unanimous decision that, you know what, let's throw the option open to everybody and see what they think. So we, we held a strategy session, what we call a think tank, where every single player in our organization was present, from the highest person to the lowest cleaner was present in that strategy session. It was a very difficult session. 
because at that point in time, we had not fully integrated our people to use Zoom and to use WhatsApp and all of that uh, for meetings, you know. So, in fact, I literally had to dial all of their numbers, about 20 people, and then we had a conference call that morning. We discussed for over, an, for over a long period of time to find, okay, what do we need to do? You will not believe that the business strategies that we used to navigate through that COVID crisis and to even frame our business model for the next two years came out of that session. And it came from dispatchers, it came from people that we least expected, you know? So one of the things that we used to do, we, we, normally we do delivery services, for instance, but um, we now have to introduce an errand business, you understand? So if you want to like shop for groceries, you send us your grocery list, we'll shop it for you, you know? So that, that was one of the things that innovations that we applied to, you know, help us navigate through that COVID period. And then we threw it open to everybody that, okay, this is what's going on. The nation, I mean, we're experiencing this 50% drop. What do we do? Do we close till other businesses open before we continue? You know, every single member of our staff made a unanimous decision that we should not close. We should stay afloat. And then they are the ones that even recommended that, you know what, let's, let's have a 50% salary slash for this first month. And then let's see how the month goes. You know, and then if it gets better, we can regularize it. And that was exactly what we did, you know. So that was our journey. And then after implementing some of the strategies that we developed, you know, during the think tank session, we were able to navigate through that period and we're still navigating through it. And, you know, we are adjusting our business model to ensure that, you know, we stay afloat. I'm glad that you answered this, you know, and I'm hoping that other business owners who are watching have a thing or two to pick from this conversation. One is the fact that there's empathy. You were able to carry them along. You were accountable to them and made them feel like, look, we are in this together. And not just waking up one day and making the decision and saying, henceforth, A, B, C, D, and E is going to happen. Yes, there are times yeah. for that, but now calls for a lot more empathy than usual because it's, right. it's difficult for not just the business owners, but for the employers, uh, the employees as well. Also, the yeah. second thing I would hope that business owners would take away from there is not to look down on anybody. You, you opened your business and you involved every single person in this meeting, and you got ideas from the most unexpected places. That's to show that innovation can come from anywhere. We must always be open to learning, and nobody's above learning. That, that's a really, really brilliant answer there. Let's talk about aid. In different parts of the world, we're seeing governments stepping up to ensure that they're so providing aid to people, to individuals, to individuals who have lost work, to businesses as well. We also have, uh, we hear about governments giving aid to businesses here in Nigeria. We understand that small and medium scale businesses are the backbone of our economy. We need them yeah. to be able to thrive. So what are some of the ways you think that the government can support in terms of, you know, this aid that should be giving out to businesses? And in what proportion do you think it should be <laughs> divided, if, if I may ask? Yeah, I mean, that's a very uh, fantastic question because one of the major challenges SMEs face, even pre-COVID and during COVID and even post-COVID, is the challenge of you know, funding and access to um, cash. So um, one of the ways governments would definitely help out is to have a stimulus package. And I believe they already have one in place, actually. So I, there, there are a couple of stimulus packages, especially for businesses that you know, the federal government of Nigeria had already implemented. And um, to a very large extent, I think there has been, you know, integrity in the area of disbursement because I know certain businesses that did not know anybody. I think they, loaned, they, they, they brought out an SME loan for um, businesses. So businesses can assess up to about 10, 10 million naira, you know, depending on what your business needs. All you need to do is you need to show a verifiable, like you, like you have a verifiable legit business and how the business has been affected by COVID, you know. So there was a little bottleneck earlier on about guarantors and all that, but recently CBN removed that, 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 that bottleneck. So I know a lot of businesses that have benefited from this, you know. I, be, I belong to an SME community and I know a couple of businesses that have gotten one and FastPace too has been privileged with one of the businesses that benefit from it. And we do not know any single person, you understand? We didn't know anybody to, I mean, because there's usually the story of you have, to, you have to know someone to be able to assess these funds and all that. But we didn't, we didn't have to know anybody. We just applied for it and, you know, it got approved. So what, what I want to say in that regard is that as they started it, they should make it more available and more inclusive 
to businesses that really need it and that, that are you know highly impacted by this COVID. And another way government could help out too is in you know with tax deferments and um, you know tax cuts, for instance. You know, so I I I know that sometime in April there was a bill on um, post COVID uh, post COVID rehabilitation or all of that. But I, I hope that bill goes through and you know government implements some tax portion measures and tax deferral measures and all that and, and then makes stimulus packages that they have for several categories of people, for families and businesses to you know get to the people that really need it. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, before we go to, I'm glad you mentioned post-COVID. We'll be looking at that in a moment. But before we go there, what are some of the innovative ways you, that businesses can scale through this? Now, one of the things that you have been able to pick from this is reinventing yourself and thinking of new things to do. Should there be a place where maybe partnerships come into play? Because we can see that two different businesses or two businesses who offer similar services or complementary services can work together. Do you think that's something that businesses should look out for? And what are some of the other tips that you can give to businesses to survive through this post, through this COVID season? We will then come to look at life post-COVID. But let's talk about surviving through COVID. Yeah, so it is very important that, um, first of all, businesses will have to get back to the drawing board. That is what happened to us. We had to go back to the drawing board to really define our business model. What problem are we actually solving? How relevant is this problem in and out of season? You understand? We know some industries like the hospitality industry, the beauty industry, they were greatly impacted too by this COVID. But if you check the trends, I have some people that play in the beauty space, for instance, that were greatly impacted by this COVID. They had to get back to the drawing board to reinvent yourself and refocus on some business strategies that are relevant in and out of season. You know, I know of big hotels that had to go back to the drawing board because they knew that they were totally locked down, you understand? So they had to start, let's say, delivering food, going to food delivery business, you know? So that's one thing, you need to get back to the drawing board, reinvent your business model and be sure that the problem that you're actually solving is relevant enough, all right? Resilience is key. To be honest, it's not going to be easy. It wasn't easy, and it's not going to be easy. But I believe that with resilience, we'll be able to bounce back and, you know, stay afloat. One last tip, too, like you rightly mentioned, is partnerships. Partnership is key. We cannot overemphasize the power of partnership. For instance, for us to be able to have um, performed the Iran, Iran business, Iran services, we had to partner with a couple of grocery stores and a couple of people. So we, our business complemented each other. So it was a win for us and it was a win for them. And it was a win for the customer too. All right, so partnerships is key. And, you know, most importantly, we need to embrace technology. Now, this is COVID-19, all right? Something else might happen later in the future, nobody knows, all right? So we need to draw the lessons that we've learned from this period and then, you know, embrace technology. If, there's, if there are ways we can digitalize our solution, you understand? Embrace technology for meetings, for collaborations, and, you know, with these few tips, I believe that we'll not only be able to navigate through it, but we'll still be able to, you know, to do better after COVID. Yeah, your, your, your answer has really answered both questions, navigating through and post-COVID. But there are talks of yes. a, an impending recession right after COVID. Does this really, how, I, I can't ask if it scares you, because I'm sure that many people are worried about this, but how best can people start to prepare themselves? How do you feel about the talks of a, a recession post-COVID? Yeah, so to be honest, um, the COVID-19 pandemic has its challenges, but let's not lose sight of the opportunity it presents too. All right, so most times we focus more on the challenges and then give out the opportunities. Look, take for instance, a company like Amazon, for instance, right now. Amazon, you know, they've, uh, throughout this period, their revenues have tripled, they've increased. I, I saw in March, they were recruiting about 100,000 people in a COVID lockdown period. You understand? So yeah. we need to be sensitive to the opportunities that are present too. We need to keep our eyes open. For instance, there are a couple of people that did not believe that the CBN intervention loan for businesses was real. You understand? But not until, you know, let's say they had a test testimony from companies like ours and then they now believe that it's real and they started applying for it. There are other opportunities, like for instance, um, 
Forbes, the Forbes Nigeria, they um, launched a, a an accelerator program for Nigeria. A lot of people were not even aware of this opportunity. You know, so they selected about 200 SMEs that they're passing through this accelerator program for a period of one month. You know, and by the grace of God, Fastpace was one of the companies that were selected too. So what we try to do, we always keep... Thank you. Thank you. So we, we always, you know, put our eyes on the ground to find out what opportunities are available. How can we, you know, reinvent our business model? How can we adjust our strategies to make sure that we are um, currently, you know, staying afloat? Oh, so uh, I'd like to just talk about the fourth selection that uh, your company has now. Is it final? Is it official? Yeah. Or are there things, does it need any form of voting? Is it, is it concluded? Okay, so um, the, the the first stage is, first of all, we have about 200 companies were selected out, out of the thousands of applications that they received. Wow. So we're currently undergoing the four weeks accelerator program. But at the end of the program, 10 companies will make it to the finalists who have the opportunity to pitch their business and assess, you know, um, grants. So um, to make it to the first, I mean, because the companies that have already made it to the 200 companies, the top 200 companies were screened and all of that. So the way Forbes designed it to be able to make their top 10 finalists, is people go out there to, you know, get as much votes as possible, you know. So like, for instance, Fastpace, we've been campaigning for votes on our social media platform, at fastpace.ng, you know, trying to get people to vote for us so that we can remain in the top 10. You know, people, businesses that make it to that top 10 who will be able to um, access the grants. So the link is on our maybe Instagram bio, fastpace.ng. You know, and that's how we've been able to attract people to get to, you know, vote for us. All right. Uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, and I will go and I would vote. <laughs> I wish you all the best. I hope that we want to see more Nigerian businesses getting the support that they need in this time and um, in this era. Before I let you go, uh, this opportunity that you always find out, first of all, you found out about the CBN palliatives and the CBN intervention. Now you've been shortlisted for Forbes. Do you actually go online to start Googling or to start searching for businesses that uh, or grants available? How do you get to know of these opportunities? Well, it's a, I, I believe it's a function of interest, you know. So these informations are out there online. That's the honest truth. But secondly, one thing that I, I think has helped us a lot is the fact that we have an ecosystem of entrepreneurs, all right? So whenever inf an information comes out and businesses, you know, you cannot actually, you cannot make it alone. That's the honest truth. We need each other. So we have an ecosystem of entrepreneurs where whenever there's information, we drop it there and then, you know, we get to access it. So each bus business, you need to get connected to, you know, an ecosystem within your space, you understand, to be informed of, you know, Oh, it seems we are having challenges with uh, Moifian. But I think we get the message. Uh, the, the conversation is just basically that you can't do it alone. You need to be informed. For, so for some people, I know that some people have like Telegram groups or WhatsApp groups where yeah. they share these messages. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I, I, you're back now. Uh, so let's wrap up the, the... You were talking about how businesses can make it alone and they need a support group. Hello? Yeah, I, I can hear you. I lost you for a minute. Yeah, so sorry about that, the network. So you, you talked about how businesses can't thrive alone and that they need support groups. Yes. All right, so yeah, just shed some more light on that as we wrap up. Okay, so support groups, um, it, it comes from, first of all, okay, there are different ecosystems you can choose to belong to. For instance, you know, I, I'm an analyst of the uh, EDC and we have an ecosystem there, right? We also, um, I, I, I mean, I, I saw an information online on the NISRA, uh, NISRA Microfinance Bank um, um, for intervention funds. So applying to it, obviously, you will need to go through a training, you need to go through an approval process. And during the point of that training, you know, all the participants of the training, we created an ecosystem amongst us, you know, where we communicate constantly. So it's just a function of, going out of your way to actually, you know, make connections because at the end of the day, you know, one of the most important forms of capital is social capital. And if we're able to build as much social capital as possible, in fact, people will even be the ones sending information to you at some point. 
you understand, that will be relevant to your business. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best with your Forbes selection and all the best thriving uh, with your business. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Imo. Thank we you We just finished much, speaking with Uf Umo Efiom, the CEO of FastSpace.ng, and he shared with us some business models and tips that businesses can use to survive and thrive during COVID-19.